Good morning everyone. I am Manisha Kabatkar, Faculty of Pharmacy, VNS Group of Institution, Bhopal. Today I will be talking about cancer. So, cancer is a Latin word meaning crab. A Greek scientist Hippocrates described cancer as a disease which spreads like a crab. So, simply cancer can be defined as a disease in which the abnormal cells can grow in an uncontrolled manner inside the body. So, when they may grow in an uncontrolled manner, sometimes it may lead to invade the other tissues and cells of the body and further they may lead to develop into other organs of the body via lymphatic system and blood circulatory system of human body. So, in cancer, there may be abnormal growth of cells and they may develop to other parts of body. As you all know, cell is a structural and functional unit of life and each and every cell of human body multiply and die in an orderly manner. Like they helping us to grow by replacing burn out cells and by healing injuries. So, every healthy cell of human body is programmed for what to do and when to do. But when sometimes something may go wrong and normal cell get converts to cancerous cell because of mutation. Mutation is a sudden change creates in proteins of a cell and this may be due to multiple mutation not a single mutation is responsible for causing cancer there may be multiple mutation in a person's lifetime which may lead to development of cancer this mutation in is in dna of the cell and it may be acquired or inherited. So, when we talk about acquired mutation, in this acquired mutation accounts for 80 to 90 percent of mutation responsible for causing cancer. In acquired mutation, they damage to the genes in a particular cell during the person's lifetime this could be breast cell or colon cell and when there is dividation of cell in a rapid manner or many times there may be formation of abnormal mass and this abnormal this abnormal mass is termed as tumor so tumor is an abnormal mass. When we classify tumor, it may be benign, second, pre-malignant and malignant. Okay, then what is benign tumor? So, benign tumor is not cancerous. Either it may not grow or multiply. But when doctors remove benign tumor, they may not return into future. So, these are not fatal. Second is pre-malignant tumor. So, in case of pre-malignant tumor, the cells are not yet cancerous but in future they may have potential to develop into cancerous cell. In case of malignant tumor, malignant tumors are cancerous tumors and they may invade the other tissues and cells of the human body. Okay. Then let us talk about inherited mutation. So, inherited mutation accounts for 5 to 10 percent of the cancer and 
दिस टाइप ऑफ म्यूटेशन इनहेरिटेड फ्रॉम पेरेंट टू देयर चाइल्ड ओके सो टू टू टाइप्स ऑफ म्यूटेशन acquired and inherited those are responsible for development of cancer okay next we will talk about genes involved in progression of cancer remember two broad categories of genes first is proto oncogene second one is tumor suppressor genes these two are very important genes they may play key role in progression of cancer these genes are responsible for encoding some important proteins which may involve in growth and development and proliferation of the cell and when these get mutated they may lead to development of cancer okay so first let me talk about proto oncogene so when proto oncogene get mutated they mutated may be due to insertion due to duplication or may be due to viral infection so when proto oncogene get mutated they convert to oncogenes and these oncogenes are responsible genes which may induce the cancer further these oncogenes can converts to oncoproteins and oncoproteins are the proteins which may responsible for causing cancer in different parts of the body so proto oncogenes are very important genes they function in a cell and produce necessary proteins which may help the cell in growth development and proliferation the example of proto oncogene is ras okay now next tumor suppressor gene so tumor suppressor gene as it name suggests tumor suppressor gene is suppressor gene which encodes for the protein which restricts the growth and development of the cells and sometimes it also leads to programmed cell death now next we will talk about risk factors involved in causing cancer so first risk factor is carcinogens or we can say cancer causing agents they may be tobacco they may be like tobacco alcohol second cellular mutation third one is viral infection viral infection may be hpv human papilloma virus it may be herpes then chemicals in food like sodium nitrate and last one is occupational like the persons who worked in nickel and asbestos industries next we will talk about types of cancer okay so basically cancer is divided into two main important categories on the basis of pattern of growth and second one on the basis of where it originates okay 
so first let me discuss on the basis of pattern of growth on the basis of pattern of growth it may divide into benign and malignant benign as i already told earlier not fatal this may be localized and not invade surrounding tissue but in case of malignant tumor the tumor may invade the surrounding tissue and surrounding organ so this may lead to formation of secondary tumor and this process termed as metastasis okay so when i not fatal but malignant cancers are very very fatal when we talk about pattern of growth the physicians mainly identify the type of cancer by using various techniques like imaging techniques are there for example mri ct scan then endoscopy is there and the main and important test which is used for diagnosis of and confirmation of cancer is biopsy okay so there are two staging system for cancer one is pnm staging and another one based on various stages like stage 1 is stage 2 is stage 3 and is stage 4 so in case of pnm pnm p stands for tumor n stands for node and m stands for metastasis so t is tumor that there is a formation of abnormal mass n is node that they can spread to the nearby lymph nodes and metastasis in which the cancer may invade the surrounding tissue and may develop into the next or surrounding organ of the body on the basis of their staging in stage 1 the cancer is contained in a cell in which it develops and has not invade the surrounding tissue in stage 2 the cancer is start to grow and sometimes it may lead to invade the nearby lymph nodes in stage 3 the cancer is now more growing or growing very rapidly and start invading the surrounding tissue lymph node and body parts of organ and in stage 4 it is responsible for invading or leads to metastasis and it spreads to the other parts of the body like liver lung and adjacent part where the tumor is developed okay next next classification based on where it originates like first carcinoma second sarcoma third leukemia and fourth 
lymphoma. So, carcinoma is a cancer of epithelial tissue. Sarcoma is a cancer of connective and supportive tissues. Leukemia is also sometimes termed as liquid cancer or blood cancer. Lymphoma, cancer of lymphatic tissue. So, this is all about type of cancer. Now, next we will discuss goal of cancer therapy. Goals of cancer therapy. So, first goal is care. We have to give care to the cancer patient and abolish all macroscopic and microscopic characteristics re related to the cancer. In, can in treatment of cancer, the care to the patient is very important to motivate the patient and to give the calm atmosphere for the patient care. Second, palliative. So, in case of palliative treatment, the main objective of the physician to shrink the size of the tumor cell or to reduce the pain to the cancer patient, to reduce the pain and to give the patient very smooth life and medications which may improve the quality of life of the patient. Next, third, adjuvant therapies. So, in case of adjuvant therapy, the patient is advised to take immunostimulant drugs or it may like radiotherapy, some specialized types of chemotherapy to give complete care to the patient. So, thank you everyone. In next class, we will discuss goals of cancer therapy in more detail and cell cycle kinetics.